Hey everyone, excuse me for my voice isn't in top shape still, but there has been some recent piece of news on the game, which won't be that interesting if I review it in a week or so. It's in the official website, it's part of the developer blogs, and it's called Star Wars The Old Republic State of the Game 2. Now I haven't reviewed State of the Game 1, but you know, let's assume we know what it was. It's posted by Jeff Hickman, the exclusive producer, and it gives us a little information on his thoughts of the current state of the game, as well as some of the things they will add in the future. Looking at the first couple of paragraphs, we see that he's very excited about what's been happening recently, and especially with the free-to-play option and the cartel market. When it comes to that, many people thought that the free-to-play was their last-ditch attempt to bring some players into the game because the game was dying and the cartel market was the way to make money out of that. Now maybe the second part is right, but I don't think the game is dying and neither does that gentleman here. He says that the servers have been increasing in population and the game is growing basically. And even though I don't play that much, uh, it is what I see. I don't know if they're just reducing the amount of servers but I do see a lot of people online. Uh, as for the free to play and the cartel market, now that they have been up for quite a while, I'm overly positive about them. I do have another account which is free to play, the one I use to, you know, as a camera to record my legacy stuff. And my, my Jedi Knight, the Leth Origin, and my uh, the Inquisitor I, I do the shocking news with. They're both free to play characters, and it's not so bad. Now, there are little annoying things, like... Do you know that Slash Kiss and Slash LOL, among other emotes, are restricted? I mean, that's... That's so bad, I was so disappointed from that. And also, uh, another thing is... While you play as a free player, you're constantly being told that subscription is better. Now, I realize the reason for that, but it just gets too much sometimes. You know, you you type an emote, it tells you that subscribers can use more emotes. You repair your gear, and it tells you subscribers can repair it cheaper. You open your inventory, it tells you that subscribers can use more features. You receive a quest reward, or a mission reward, and it tells you subscribers can receive more rewards. You point at your experience, it tells you subscribers can get rested experience, and so on and so forth, and it just gets a little too much. I'm also surprised of how much people use the cartel market. Uh, I didn't think they would actually buy things, but when I'm online, I keep seeing people using Revan's gear or Revan's mask or you know any other set, so I guess the cartel market and the free play are actually a good thing. There is one last paragraph here that talks a little about the expansion, but it's nothing I haven't mentioned in my preview, so there will be a link in the description if you want to see that. Moving on to the second part, which is the hot topics. The first topic is called an Elder Game Content, and by the looks of it, it means end game content, you know, the content for level 50 players. And it basically talks about uh, what's coming, you know, new operations, new flashpoints, new difficulties. There's a little funny part saying that the expansion, Rise of the Hot, Hot Cartel, will be targeted for the high-level players, you know, in case some of us thought it's going to be otherwise. The second portion of that topic has some interesting stuff. It's nothing specific, but definitely things I I desired and I wanted through through the last year. The first is more stuff to do with your companions. And that's something all of us who like the story want, I think. Um, it's a very good way to add little things to the story on a regular basis. You know, just a single companion quest now and then can uh, break the rule that you have three chapters and as soon as your chapter three ends, that's it for the story. So more companion things to do will be a, a very good touch and I hope they expand on that. And the next thing, another thing I really like, or at least the idea of it, is 
introducing new activities to make us revisit the old areas because you know the world the world is vast and large and there are so many areas that are essentially barren as soon as we hit level 50 so i hope the second part of this topic is um, expanded upon and worked on very much the second topic is world pvp what happened to making elon better and what's going on with open world pvp now i don't know it's because i don't pvp that much but reading this text i don't see anything worth discussing you know it it says that uh elon will be fixed they haven't forgotten about it which was terrible i have to admit um something big is coming more on world pvp and war zones are coming and that's that's basically it and they want to provide an excellent pvp experience you can read it for yourself if you get anything more than that from this feel free to tell me in the comments the third topic is about uh, copying characters to the public test server not much to talk about here as well uh, they're saying that they will be introducing a new system that will allow live transfers if you remember some time ago they announced that they didn't have the sufficient technology to ensure massive character transfers and that caused a little controversy and made some people unhappy I personally don't have the time to take part in the testing to be on the public test server but for those of you who do I hope this does get fixed soon you know early this year and you guys get what you need and the fourth and last topic as my voice starts to betray me is the same gender romance ironically I'm gonna be talking about that in uh, two videos in a row so first of all they're apologizing that it's not yet in the game if you remember there was um, I don't know how they call it I think a guild panel or something essentially an open discussion with the fans it happened last year and they said that by the end of the year um, the same gender romance and more story will be in the game so they're apologizing that the free-to-play options took so much time to develop and they didn't have enough time for that which which is probably the case also they don't give a straight answer on that but as far as I can tell um, the same gender romance that's gonna be introduced will be only with NPCs on Macap, and the companion romances will not be released yet I've been to the forums and there's a huge hype going on about same gender romance uh, even if even though I mentioned it in my last video I gotta say I'm not that huge of a fan of same gender romance you know even if I play a female character I tend to go more for the opposite gender romance but like I said again it can be done properly and it can be a good thing an example from Bioware games is I guess Liara from Mass Effect and Liliana from Dragon Age which by the way on the side note Dragon Age Origins is one of my favorite games of all time definitely my favorite RPG and even though it's a little less cinematic than Star Wars The Old Republic and it doesn't have voice acting maybe someday I'll do some videos about it because I really love the game it's great and I think it's underrated now going back to Star Wars The Old Republic they're announcing the same gender romance with NPCs on Makeb obviously there'll be more details to come I just hope when it comes to that that they're gonna do it properly you know uh, a bad example again from their games will be ironically Dragon Age 2 the same gender romances there were enabled to essentially every companion and they were almost the same no matter what gender you were you know doesn't matter if you're a male or female companions treated you pretty much the same way also when it comes to companions and same gender romance I guess I would prefer to to have a new companion that is open to that option uh, because I don't know tell me what you think about that but I think it will be a little weird to um, all of a sudden find out that Corso Riggs is open to a same gender relationship and starts flirting with the male smuggler I don't know I guess the better way would have been to introduce that on day one you know if they wanted to do it with the current companions but but you know enough about that 
and that was it from this state of the game they sound or this gentleman sounds very excited i hope what he says is true i hope the game is really going up and at least not going down tell me your thoughts your opinions i would like to hear them very much and that was it for today good luck and be good